Hello everyone. Decided uh, following the footsteps of my boy who loves to film himself doing things. I think this will end up being my uh, third YouTube video possibly. Um, and I'm doing this in part because I'm hoping that this will help uh, inspire and support other uh, beginner beekeepers. So um, without further ado, I'll just give you a kind of run through of our setup here. And uh, this is year number three of our attempt to uh, be um, beekeepers. And it's also the third year that we've actually had to purchase bees because the last two seasons, our colonies uh, didn't make it through the winter um, despite lots of uh, feeding and other supplemental supports that we gave them. And we're not sure why that is, but um, we've changed things up a little bit this year. We're still going with a worry hive, which is what you see here. You can see here, this is uh, actually we purchased this from Bee Thinking in Portland, Oregon, um, three years ago. And it's got three uh, supers on it and um, custom fabricated roof, which uh, I made last year to give a little bit more coverage of the whole hive uh, that's easily removable. And uh, just today uh, in the shop, I went ahead and built a new stand that, as you hopefully can see, elevates the whole hive off the stump that uh, we've been using for the last two years to hold it, uh, to house it. And the reason I did that was twofold. One was we had uh, problems with insects, mainly ants, crawling up the stump and right into the hive and nesting in various places and just creating, you know, a nuisance. And so um, we, in the past, we used a thing, a product called Tanglefoot, which was like a gel, a castor oil gel that would go all the way around the stump. And that was just a lot of surface area to have to cover. and found that um, it actually killed some of the bees too. So I went ahead and fabricated just out of mild steel, a four pedestal base, and then drilled in half inch holes into the stump so that in the future, we can do that same sort of uh, treatment with the, uh, the castor oil tanglefoot um, uh, paste and hopefully be more effective at keeping ants and other bugs out of the hive. So what I'm going to do is just uh, give you a run through. Of, I'm going to take the hive apart um, and then uh, we're going to bring the bees out. I just picked them up from uh, Wilsonville this morning. Uh, Rural Bee Supply, also known as Brushy Mountain Bee Farm. So it's three pounds of bees for $120 raised here in Oregon. One queen and I'm guessing maybe 3,000, 4,000 bees. I'm not sure what the quantity is, but it's a lot. It's in a shoe box that we'll bring out here in just a minute. Uh, but for right now, I just figured I'd take the hive apart to show you the different components and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so here we go. Pulling off the metal roof, it's easy enough. The uh, hive, uh, the worry hive originally came with a wooden cedar, this is all western red cedar, that just didn't have as much uh, coverage as I'd like. So I gave it a little bit of uh, tongue oil this morning just to try to protect the wood a little more. Uh, I probably could have gone further and sanded it and all that, but I was like, you know what? Um, not a big priority right now since it's still in pretty good shape. So this is the, the base of the roof structure. I'm gonna put that back here. And um, so now what you have, this is called the, um, the cellar or the quilt box, I think. Once upon a time, it had cedar shavings in it, but those became a real great nesting location for ants mainly. So I changed it up with a, uh, little bat of insulation called Roxel that's totally natural. And then on the bottom you have the, uh, I guess, canvas cloth that uh, just kind of covers things. And um, so from here, what we have is, uh, I'm gonna try, I think, to uh, reposition so things are easier to see. What you have here is the top super, which I'm gonna be using as a feeding uh, station. So in this is actually Again, this is a feeding uh, tray that I purchased from Be Thinking, and if I pull the, uh, the box away, the frame away, you'll see uh, this is one part uh, dry vert sugar and uh, dissolved in one part water, so it's 250 grams of each, and I've let that cool to you know the air temperature, and so I'll be monitoring this closely over the next week or so because not, there's not that much pollen um, available right now, it seems, to the bees. We're sitting on, is it the 18th trace? of April? 19th of April, okay. So I'm gonna set this down over here and just kind of take things apart in, in reverse order. So normally this is the very top of the hive where the bees can occupy. I cut this slit so that the bees can crawl up through the center of the feeder, only get at the sugar water and nowhere else. When I'm not using that, I just have it like that. And then I put the quilt box on top. 
So this top super is just purely for feeding. As the colony grows, um, you know, I'd maybe remove this and then add more bars on the next super up so they can continue building. And so going down one level, which you'll see here, this is what they, they talk about um, with a worry hive. This is the top, the top and only bar. It's part of the frame. So the assumption here is that the bees are going to build off of that triangular point. And you can see there's remnant of honeycomb from years past here. So today what I'll be doing is I'm going to be actually, I'm actually going to be putting the bees down into this uh, area right here. So I'm just going to remove these uh, five or six bars for now. That gives me room to kind of put the queen down here and then shake all the rest of the bees in, hopefully without them getting too fussed. And uh, so what I'll do right now though is just show you further down. I've left a little bit of comb on this bar from last year because it was never used and it seemed to be really clean and in good shape. These might be happy to have a little bit of that. And then all the way on the bottom here are even more combs. If I lift this fully, you'll see this is a pollen patty that I just bought for $3, which instead of the sugar is a source of uh, protein for the bees. Because again, there's pollen around, but maybe not enough for them to really get going. And in here you can see, if I can turn this upside down without losing the patty, are more remnants of uh, clean comb from last year that I figured I'd just uh, leave for them. Um, so that's essentially what the whole setup looks like. At the very bottom, this is the base, the screen base where a lot of their you know, waste products will drop. And uh, from there you can pull this tray out to clean and monitor if they're getting uh, any sort of diseases or anything. You can clean that regularly just to see what's going on. And that's really all there is to it as far as the, the basics of the, um, the hive. So I'm gonna put it back together and I'm gonna go get our bees. There we go. Okay, little GoPro malfunction there, and I'm third year beekeeping. I still get kind of freaked when I'm dealing with tons of bees, but uh, basically here's the queen. I just pried her out of the top of the box. She's in her own little cage here. I pulled the wooden plug out and I put a um, marshmallow in, so the other uh, worker bees, which are all female of course, are going to chew through that over the next uh, day or two to become more familiar with her. And so what I'm going to do is just put this down in the lower part of the uh, of the second super here and uh, they'll slowly become acquainted with her. You can see she's looking at her, she's not that much bigger than the others, but uh, they all know that she's the one in charge. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put her there and uh, remove this at some point in the not too distant future. I'm gonna try to put her in a position so that we can actually see the progress of the, uh, the chewing by the bees. So we'll know when uh, they're actually uh, through to it. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to as carefully as I can lift this remaining uh, feeding jar and just start tapping the bees down in into the hive and uh, hopefully that'll go well. Oh yeah, and then another tool that I forgot, forgot to uh, mention that's really handy is the brush. You can gently sort of maneuver those guys around to different places with the brush. When it comes to this, the real best way is to just, because you can see they're really clumped on each other here, I'm just going to turn it upside down and start tapping down as much as I can. Just literally pouring the bees in with the hope that uh, most of them will find their home there. They literally do just pour out. Try not to bang it because that can lead to more angry bees. Now it looks like just an absolute lovely batch of bees there. They don't seem too angry. They're just curious, I think, more than anything. So what I'll do now is set this box to the side and uh, put that near the front of the hive um, so that um, they can find their way in. And thankfully it's uh, not raining right now, but uh, Sure, it's coming again. So now basically all I want to do is get the uh, bars back in position. So I'll gently kind of put these in without hopefully squishing any bees. Because if you kill one bee, pheromones start getting released that the bees are under uh, fire and they go into that defensive mode. And we don't want that. We just want them to be happy and mellow. And right now they just seem to be making a nice pretty mellow hum sound and that's exactly what I was hoping to hear at this stage in the game. 
So I'm just trying to make these bars as equally spaced as I can here. Obviously a little bit of a trick here with so many bees around, but I think it is possible. Sort of gently try to swipe them away, sweep them away a little bit. Okay. Okay, and now the last one here. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I think we're good. Just kind of trying to get them in, get them happy. Get to a point where we can say, Welcome to your new hive, girls. That's what is going on here. Um, all right, so now we take our canvas cloth for creating our next uh, super, which will be for feeding. Just trying to keep this sealed in, keep everybody happy here. Yep, okay, that's feeling okay. Now I'm going to go with my feeder tray right here. I'm going to lift that up to make sure there's... Oh, it's a good thing I checked that because right now you want to lift that fold just like that. Yep, you do. You don't want to have a big mess. Now you can see, so long as the uh, syrup stays at a decent level, the bees can't actually get uh, into this upper super, but they can get to their food. So now, we stretch. We're feeling good. We're going to go ahead and put this box on and this one we're again just looking to have it be all in line that feels good and our next step and final step here is to put our quilt cover on i don't think there's any bees stuck in there you can look in the windows here after to make sure that's cool yep and then now we go go on out of there sweetie come on you're not gonna like living there, trust me. Yeah, and neither are you, girl. Go ahead. Okay. Right. I think I got the sequence right. And now, the roof. My cinematography skills leave, I'm sure, a lot to be desired. But okay, now what we'll do is change up our view. Be more like here. Oh, look at them, they're exploring already, Tracy. Okay. So now I'm to the point where I feel, I think pretty soon I'll be feeling comfortable enough to remove this gear. I'm not quite there yet. Maybe one of these gears I'll actually have the confidence to do this without equipment. But uh, I guess a little over a year ago I uh, did some uh, operations in a hive without um, adequate protection and I got stung maybe 20 times and it really was not nice. <laughs> It's funny for the rest of the family to witness, but for me it was pretty uh, freaky. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now, I think uh, this stuff is all pretty close to the entry. I think they should be able to figure out what's what. I think if anything, I might just go over a little bit further here. Try to just say to them, hey guys, home is right there. And they will, I think in time, figure out, especially with it raining and whatnot, that. Uh, They'll talk to each other and they'll share the word that this is where the new home is. So that's it. So we'll check back in in a little while once things have calmed down. Okay, so um, as you can see now, I'm back to my non-veiled uh, state. And uh, what I wanted to do was just uh, show you guys um, the, real quick what the inside of the hive looks now looks, looks like now that I've got everything closed up. So. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. You can see here still there's lots of bees uh, hanging out in the package box. And I think still um, I, there probably were a lot of dead ones even that I shook in. But it's starting to rain now. Um, hopefully the bees will figure out that they don't want to hang out too much with uh, the rain coming down. I'm going to go ahead and just give them a little bit of a cover there with my veil. But mainly what I wanted to show was right here, I think. This should show. Oh yeah, you can see the bees are just hanging out all over that window they're already probably feeling pretty stoked because they're in a space that has a lot more room and is a lot quieter you can see those are all dead bees that fell in so we had a big amount of fallout with um, any luck the bees will get on it and uh, pretty quickly they'll start kicking those carcasses out so that's a fair amount of dead beeage right there um, and that's pretty much what we got so it's starting to rain i'm going to go inside now good timing eh <laughs>